Earth. Got a copy? I don't know if you've had your copy of Correct Grammar yet this morning. But if you haven't, let's get some in you. Uh, my volition behind this stream is to complete part two of my mini class regarding the part of speech known as the conjunction, which is given a numerical value of zero in correct sentence structure communication parsing syntax grammar. So if you haven't seen the first mini class, I would highly recommend you go back and look at it. Um, it's one of the most recent videos I've posted on this channel. And it gave closure to how a conjunction function, well, it gave closure to what a conjunction is, first of all, which is as a part of speech, it's a neutral condition of state and it functions as sort of a bridge or a connector. And in the fiction, adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, uh, English babble, it could connect adverbs, it could connect verbs, it could connect adjectives, pronouns, and it could also connect any of the five syntax patterns. In quantum grammar, in correct sentence structure, it would either connect sevens or it would connect five, six, sevens. Um, that will be a focus uh, if I have time later on in this one, or maybe I'll do a part three to focus on the correct sentence structure aspect of it. But in this one, I'm definitely going to hit um, some more of the fiction syntax in uh, how that relates to the conjunction. So to begin with, <clears throat> as in the other one, I'm, other class, I'm going to give you an example. This sentence, and on this sixth day of April, how would you syntax this? What syntax values would you bank on these terms? Now, of course, a prerequisite to doing this would be to have knowledge of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, specifically these syntax values behind me on my placard. Thank you, Joshua, hyphen David, colon Adams. And particularly the first five syntax values on that board. You would know what those syntax values are, what their functions are, and how to identify them, whether they're tangible or non tangible or these types of things. So the way I teach syntax, as outlined in multiple videos on this channel, I teach it starting at the end of a word group or a sentence and go backwards. This way, it's the most efficient and accurate way to do it. Now, some people will, uh, some people teach that you can go into something like this and then when you see a word like, um, this, you can put a one above it, uh, just automatically think that it's an adverb, which is not correct, and it's not correct judge mechanics. Because what is the most simple rule, rudimentary rule of judge mechanics? Rule one, rule equal. You have to look at the whole scenario and establish knowledge before you go in and put your and bank your values. That's the, the number one thing. You can't just assume something is what it is at face value. You have to get all the knowledge and all the closure to the best of your skill and ability and capacity, and then you bank your judgment or your values. So in this case, we'll start here with April. And we'll determine whether this is a tangible contract word or a non-tangible contract word. And again, I have multiple videos giving closure to what that means, what's tangible, what's non-tangible. Tangible, also known as fact-based. 
and non-tangible, also known as non-fact-based. Now, what that means is that these words are based or not based on facts. They're not facts because they have not been positioned with position lodial phrases. Therefore, they're based on facts that we have a tangible contract with or we don't have a tangible contract with. So, to begin with, April. I think everyone out there listening or watching right now can certify that they have a contract with a concept known as April, which is a location. It's a month. So therefore, April is tangible contract. Of would be non-tangible contract. Day would be tangible contract because if I tell you, uh, if I ask you what day is it, you know what I'm talking about. So you have a tangible contract with it. Unlike of. You may have a general sort of abstract sense of what an of is, but it's not the same thing as day. You can definitely know what a day is, but an of, it's just like a, a part of speech or something, but it's not something tangible. One way to certify what I'm saying is to parse these words yourself. Do the work yourself. Go to etymologyonline.com and look up the particles of these words. Look up the earliest nativity root meaning of the words. And if that earliest nativity root meaning is tangible, then the word would be syntaxed as tangible. If the earliest nativity root meaning of the word is non-tangible, well, then you would syntax it as non-tangible. And just real quick, tangible words would be syntaxed as verbs, adjectives, or pronouns. Non-tangible contract words would be syntaxed as adverb, verbs, or pronouns. Or to put it in a negative condition of state, tangible contract words will not be adverbs. Non-tangible contract words will not be adjectives. Simple. So knowing that and knowing the five uh, syntax patterns, you can basically syntax through process of elimination alone once you can certify the tangibility or non-tangibility of the terms. So having said that, sixth, that is tangible contract. Because if I tell you park in the sixth space, you know what I'm talking about. Tangible contract. This is non-tangible. If you look up this, it will try to define itself by itself. It will give other non-tangible contract words like the, that. Um, so it's non-tangible. On is on tangible or non-tangible. I'll leave that up to you to look up. And you can put it in the comments or in the chat what you come up with. And now we have this word, and, which brings us to the crux of why I'm doing this part two of the conjunction workshop. Let's begin syntaxing. So we certified that April is tangible. We certified that of is non and day is tangible. So I'm going to write down my syntax values. If anyone else wants to try to make your best guess at syntaxing this sentence, please feel free to pop it in the comments field. I'm going to go syntax it right now and share my conclusion with you and the closure as to why I'm going to bank the values that I'm banking. Does anybody have a guess as to syntaxing? the values of that sentence. Nobody. Here are the values I came up with.
notice I put the syntax value of one above the and. Most people would think that and going by this syntax key would be a zero. But when you think about the function of a conjunction, and there are two conjunctions, and, which is a command, and or, which is a choice, and correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, when you think about the function of those words, they're bridges and they're neutral. But what if they're not bridging anything? This and comes at the beginning. There's nothing before it, only after it. So it's not a bridge between anything. It's not connecting anything. Therefore, it is not performing the function of a conjunction. In this scenario, it's performing the function of an adverb, a non-tangible contract adverb, which is modifying on into a verb. And I'm going to leave the tangibility or non-tangibility of this word up to you to find out. A little bit of homework for you. And again, you can put it in the comments. Remember, verbs and pronouns can either be tangible or, tangible or non-tangible, depending upon what is modifying them. Or in the case of a pronoun, it can be any representative of any concept or word in the English language, tangible or non-tangible. So we've hit the adverb verb. That is a syntax scenario, one of the five syntax patterns. Next, we have this, which is non-tangible adverb, modifying sixth, which is tangible contract adjective, which is coloring day into a pronoun. And day is tangible, as we certified. And then as we know in the syntax rules, nothing can follow a pronoun except for a break in the continuance of the evidence or an adverb. And of is most definitely a tangible contract adverb modifying tangible contract April into a dangling participle verb. Again, of is non-tangible contract adverb modifying April into tangible contract dangling participle verb. In the fiction, a verb will not exist unless it's being modified by an adverb. Hence the one, two syntax scenario. What is a dangling participle verb? Well, what is a verb? A verb is thinking, it's motion. In this case, April is a verb. Have you ever heard of a verb April? If verb is thinking, there's nothing left to think about here. That's why it's just dangling there. That's why we call it dangling participle verb. All right, let's move on to the next example. Okay. Lastly, <clears throat> the court decides or, okay? Lastly, the court decides or. How would you syntax that sentence? Does anybody have a guess? As I just shared, there are two conjunctions, and and or. <clears throat> so let's start at the end and work backwards and determine the tangibility or non-tangibility of the words. Or is non-tangible. And again, you can certify what I'm saying by looking it up, by parsing the words in etymologyonline.com. If you go to the earliest nativity root meaning of the word, and that is tangible, then the word is tangible. If it's non-tangible, then the word is non-tangible. That's how you would syntax it. Decides. Tangible or non-tangible? Just like the on up here, I'll leave that up to you to look up and you can put it in the comments. Court, tangible or non-tangible? Well, if I say, I'm going to court today, I think you know what I mean. 
if I'm going to the tennis court today, I think you know what I mean. So that's tangible. The, definitely non-tangible. Lastly, okay. If I say you're in last place, well, then that's a location, right? That's tangible contract. But then you put the L-Y on the back uh, at the end of it. Now what happens? I know what a last is. Do I know what a lastly is? Do I have a tangible contract with what a lastly is? I personally don't. That is why the L-Y is the most poisonous suffix in that it can poison a tangible contract word into non-tangible. So this word is non-tangible by my closure. So again, <clears throat> let's start at the end and work backwards. Or is non-tangible. How about this size? What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give you a couple minutes uh, to look it up yourself at etymologyonline.com. Look up these sides, look up the particles of that word, and look for the earliest nativity root meaning. As far back as it goes, it should only take you like 30 seconds. And if that root is tangible, then the word would be syntax as tangible contract. It's very important to your closure on syntax. Wish I had some Jeopardy music to play here. I'm going to look it up along with you. So that I can see what you're seeing. Okay. See what I mean? It doesn't take long at all. I just looked it up and bam, right there it was. So I know whether it's tangible or non-tangible. Do you? Anybody have a guess out there? Decides, is that tangible or non-tangible? Wow, we got a quiet room here today. I would highly recommend people participate. I mean, if you're serious about learning this stuff, this is the place to do it. When I was learning it back in 2017, man, I wish there would have been someone like me with a venue like this doing a live stream, putting themselves out there and answering questions. You certainly won't see this from Russell J. Gould or Marcus Sean Christopher. <laughs> okay. I digress. Here we go. So or is non-tangible. Also, we know that or and and are conjunctions, right? But that is contingent upon what comes before and after. You got to think of the function of the word. Like I stated at the beginning, this is basic rudimentary judge mechanics. You got to know what you're doing before you bank your value, right? When you make an investment, you want to be sure about that investment before you make it, right? Same thing here. So decides, although there is a particle of negation there, DE, which means no, sides comes from a Proto-Indo-European root, which is the earliest nativity root meaning of the word, which means to strike. And I have a tangible contract with what it means to strike something. Therefore, this is tangible contract. We said the court was tangible contract. The is non-tangible contract. So I'm going to bank my syntax values, well, at least some of them. There's my syntax. Because the comma is a break in the continuance of the evidence, this is separate than this. So the is tangible contract adverb modifying court into an adjective because court is tangible contract. Now. Adverbs modify either adjectives or verbs. In this case, it's an adjective. Decides is tangible contract, so that's an adjective. And that's coloring or into a non-tangible pronoun. 
Now, some people would go in and put a zero above or simply because they recognize it as one of the two conjunctions in correct sentence structure. However, just like up here, in this case, or is not performing the function of a conjunction. It's not bridging anything because nothing comes after it except for a break in the continuance of the evidence. It's not a bridge between anything. It's a bridge between this adjective and nothing. So therefore, it does not perform the function of a conjunction. It's a pronoun in this case. That's my closure on that. I wanted to put a challenge out to you, the viewer. How would you syntax this word? Is it an adverb, a verb, an adjective, or a pronoun? Now, as I gave you closure, last is a location. I have a tangible contract with what last is. However, the L-Y is such a poisonous suffix that it poisons tangible contract words into non-tangible contract words. So this is a non-tangible contract condition of state. How would you syntax it? Anybody out there? I know we got a few viewers here. Don't be shy. Lastly, Piero, very good, very good. It is indeed a pronoun because it is standing by itself. The reason why I gave this example is because, as I stated at the beginning of this uh, session, at the beginning of this class, some people will go in and if they see an LY, they'll automatically put a one above it, which is very reckless and not correct. Basic rudimentary rule one rule equal judge mechanics dictate that you have to look at the whole scenario and see what's going on first before you bank your value. Just like you want to know about an investment before you make it to make sure it's a sure thing. Same thing here. So this is a four. Because it's a word term standing by itself. All right, moving on to the next one. You may choose and or or. Piero, what do you think? How would you syntax this? What, val what values would you bank on this one? So let's start at the end go through the mechanics of syntaxing or is non-tangible or is non-tangible and is non-tangible choose is choose tangible or non-tangible does anybody know go ahead and take a minute and look it up Anybody is choose tangible or non tangible? So Piero, choose is not a four. Think about the words and think about the functions of the words as we gave closure to up here. These, the reason why I created these sentences was to show you that this is an adverb. This and is an adverb because it's not performing the function of a conjunction. Same thing with this or is not performing the function of a conjunction. 
it's a pronoun here and it's an adverb here because it's not connecting anything. Okay? Choose is actually tangible. Choose is tangible. Choice is tangible. May is tangible. So I'm going to give you my syntax value here, and then I'm going to give you closure as to why I bank those values. You is non-tangible contract adverb, which is modifying may, which is tangible contract adjective, which is coloring choose, which is tangible contract adjective, which is coloring and into pronoun, which is non-tangible in this case. And then or is the only word here functioning as a conjunction. It's connecting these two pronouns. These two non-tangible contract pronouns. This and is not connecting anything. And this or is not connecting anything. They're both pronouns being connected by this conjunction. Thus concludes the second part of my mini class on the conjunction. I'm going to do a third one now uh, having to do with correct sentence structure, five, six, sevens, and how a conjunction would work within that construct. It functions in the same exact way. They're just bridges and connectors, non-tangible. You know, and people will ask, well, how can you use, you know, a word like of or and or 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 is in correct sentence structure because it begins with a vowel in front of a consonant? And the answer is this. They're not facts. They don't perform the function of facts. They perform the function of verb, positionals, and lodials, not facts. So I hope this was helpful. Hope you uh, enjoyed this. Again, if you want to learn this stuff, you're welcome to study this channel. There's over 300 videos containing the sum total of my correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, knowledge. Or if you want to fast track your uh, learning, you may contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. See the pinned comment and apply for a correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar workshop. I've had people learn this in one 60 minute workshop, but then again, I've had people do about 20 workshops and they still haven't learned it. So it's wherever you're motivated to go and how open you are to learn it and how empty your cup is. This is Aurora. She wants to get in on the workshop. So yeah, go ahead and uh, email me if you want to apply for the workshop. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks.